So good morning everyone and uh, welcome. So I just wanted to start by um, welcoming you all to this uh, part of the literacy training in its broadest sense and to this program of ocean literacy, English literacy, use of NOAA, uh, understanding of NOAA facilities and using technology and collaborative approaches with the College of Exploration. Uh, this very much is a, an experiment, in a sense. It's a pilot project. And I'd like to introduce, well, my name is Peter Tudnam. And I'd like to introduce Mary Taglarini here, from, who is our host today. Thank you. And also, Mary is a co-PI, or principal investigator, with this project that is fun, funded uh, by NOAA. And the other co-PI is Mary Casanova, who you all know from uh, Monroe County uh, LVA. Now we have uh, an evaluation program going with Sandy Newell and also with Tina Bishop, who are evaluating this program as we go along. And we have a number of different team members with Noah Maria Bello, who um, cannot be here today, and Erica Rule, who cannot be here today, but we'll hear more about them later, and Dawn, and I forgot Dawn. No, Nolan. Noland, and I know there's a number of uh, uh, casts there which we should add in. Um, and then from the College of Exploration, Melissa Ryan, Melly Lewis, and Mark Zaman, who is on the video, which I'll talk about here briefly. So I, I like to think of this as a co-exploratory, so we're inviting you to participate with us, all right? We do not have the, all the answers here. This is not gonna be instruction on everything on how to do it. We need to collaborate today and going forward. We need to capture the spirit of exploration in looking at new things and new ideas. And it's a bit of a lab, too. So that's how we put this word together. So we're a bit of a, uh, an experimental place, too, to see how all this works together. So the primary objective of this project is to engage adult and youth learners in technologically facilitated outdoor experiential learning with NOAA partners in the Florida Keys to improve environmental, ocean, climate, and English literacy. That's the overarching goal of what we're trying to do. It's a really big goal. And it's a pilot project, and we'll have some successes, and we'll have some failures, and we totally expect that. But it is going to be, uh, I think, a lot of fun. I'm excited about it. I think this is just, you know, to put these things together is uh, amazing, really. The other thing is that this is a bit of a model, too. So you're, you're helping us be uh, exper experiment, see what we can do. How does this work? Um, because if we get it going here, then the idea is to use you guys as the model for a national program, which we think could be very exciting. Yes, please. Well, for a national program, I mean, down here, there's so much distress with regard to our reefs and our local environment. Yeah. Um, so if you're going to put this forward nationwide, like if you're in the mountains, uh, are you going to have one section of it that would be perhaps for a local region? Oh, absolutely. That could, that could vary? Absolutely. And Melissa's going to talk about you know, the connection with you and the ocean where you are. We want to start where you are. Where you are today, you know, here in the Discovery Center, this is a connection with the ocean, isn't it? So yes, if it's up in uh, the Chesapeake Bay, it might be about estuaries and, uh, and decreasing stocks of um, crabs. Or um, if it's in the mountains, we might talk about watersheds and streams. And so any, anything that connects to the ocean and to climate, too. I mean, I will put that in. Uh, we are talking about ocean and climate, but they're connected in a very real way. So that's another piece of sort of exploration we're going to do. Does that yes, help? Thank yeah. You. Uh, so we've got a list of outcomes, um, which I don't need to read, but we've got a fairly ambitious set of outcomes, basically, that we're looking to achieve. And this is over a two-year period. We're not going to do this today. This is just the beginning of it. So um, I'm going to move along uh, on that. So one of the things that uh, we've got a couple of products that we're looking to create. And uh, we've already made a start on number one, which is a, uh, a simplified version of ocean literacy definitions and ideas. Um, and, and you can help us with that as well. 
And that's going to be an evolving uh, a process. And then the idea is to build stories. And we were learning yesterday about how to make a simple story and then to repeat it and then to elaborate it. So that's the idea, is to do that, only to do it with pictures and technologies in the ocean. So. And we put as a key part the language experience approach, right? So we learned about that yesterday, and we're going to be using that and ask you to use that uh, in the work. So we, a week or so ago, we had a brainstorm. We said, well, we really need a website, <laughs> of course. So um, this is going to be the website for the project, oceanspeak.org. And uh, there's a page or two there now. And you're more than welcome to um, help us build it and in any way, shape, or form. We, it's going to be a, a showcase for the project. Um, I just wanted to briefly touch on ocean literacy. Um, ocean literacy is a project that I've been involved in, and Mary, and Melissa, and Tina, Melly, a number of us since 2002, when we started saying, the ocean is not represented in learning at school. Um, it's 70% of the planet. It's what is it, 99% of all living, the source of all living uh, things on the planet, and yet it's not taught in schools. There's not a very large awareness about the ocean uh, in this country and its role in our lives. So um, there's a number of groups that worked on creating this idea of ocean literacy. Uh, these are some of them, National Science Foundation, NOAA, Central in this, National Geographic. So there's a national attention, national imperative about becoming an ocean literate and now climate literate country. Um, so there's a number of groups that came together to work on this and come up with the document that you were given yesterday, uh, which is a big consensus document that was principally designed to enable ocean topics to be taught in schools by science teachers who perhaps were not um, marine biologists, and the idea was to give them a framework to take ocean topics and get it taught in schools. But now it's expanding out into broader use and the kind of things that we're hoping to do. Ocean literacy is an understanding of the ocean's influence on you and your influence on the ocean. It's a simple statement, but it's talking about the interaction and our mutual dependency. And we came up with seven principles. Uh, many people think that there's lots of oceans. I think one idea that we want to get forward is that there's only one ocean. Uh, it's all connected. Um, lots of basins. The ocean and life in the ocean shape features on the Earth. The ocean is a major influence on weather and climate. It makes the Earth hab habitable. It supports a great diversity of life and ecosystems. The ocean and humans are inextricably interconnected and the ocean is largely unexplored. Now, we, t we took number six and we said, well, wait a minute. We, we were getting ourselves even sort of wrapped around inextricably <laughs> interconnected. <laughs> um, and so, but we did take number six as our starting point. So we're going to be talking about number six today. And that's how we connected. And basically, uh, we've, we've simplified that comment down or made it more direct. So that was the end of what I wanted to say. And um, that was my introduction, sort of quick overview. I know it's a bit quick, but I wanted to get us moving along here. So.